As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah In meditation what does it mean to put your hand on the floor? Yeah, in the meditation and then in the teachings of the meditation we have our meditation book coming out soon inshaAllah Timeless Reality that has two years of question and answer so it has like a complete encyclopedia <laughs> of tafakkur everything is under this, the, the sun is in there for the tafakkur inshaAllah and the importance is that all, all that is being taught is based on energy and how to bring in energy and how to push out our negative energy because we're like a bus, we go on this earth filling with negativity. Well how are we going to push out the negativity? So then you get a cup and you put in like, I don't know, something that would colour it. And then you just keep pouring water and water and water until it pushes out all of the coloured water because it overflows and just keeps flowing out, flowing out and flowing out until it becomes clearer, clearer, clearer until you put out all of the dirtiness and all that's left is the cleanliness and the pureness. But well, that has to happen also with our energy. All day long we're going around and collecting negative energy, bad energy, all these different things. If we don't meditate and we don't breathe, we don't bring in positive energies and breathe and breathe the positive energy, ask Allah that, I want to breathe in this positive energy, Ya Rabbi dress me from these energies and the immensities of doing zikr and we're doing Ya Haleem, Ya Haleem or Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. What happens with the energy reality of the soul? Its food and its powers in the recitation means you're energizing and as you're energizing it's a positive light, a pure light, divine light. As a result you have to push out the negative light. So that negative is by the breath coming out, every time we inhale positive and exhale all the negativity and the grounding. So that's why we said in the sunnah and the secret of the sunnah is that when everything we're doing of a spiritual nature this is our grounding. You don't have to touch the ground if you have a grounding device. But if you're meditating on the ground then you keep one hand on the ground and one hand connected to make your connection. Why? So that the positive is coming and it's not just flowing but you're creating a, a source for the energy that's negative to be pushed out. Because the nature of grounding is that the positive will come with such a force that it pushes out negativity and you provide a, an ability for the negativity to be grounded back onto the earth and to leave. Allah ordered that already through your salah. So now look in our lives, how many times are we grounding? Why Allah ordered for us salah and the pinnacle of salah is sujood. The height of salah is sujood. Why? Because it's the point in which your heart is the highest and that you are in complete submission to the Lord Most High because He gave us the faculty of our head. He said, the head and your nafs I know that you're using it too much but for me I don't mind giving you but you put that head down in my Divine the Presence and show to me your humbleness of being nothing. We are a nation in which our head is on the ground in the presence of our Lord. There's another nation they stand up and they will never put their head down. And though they have gone astray, there's another nation that put a box from the ground onto their head because they didn't want to make sujood and those are the nation that angered Allah And the, the correct nation, the heavenly nation God's kingdom coming, what kingdom coming? It's the kingdom that makes sujood, <laughs> that we, we go down. When the Lord says, go down, we go down and it's a sign of humility and immense grounding. You know they put that box from the dunya because you know the whole philosophy was always to find some legal issues that you could manipulate. So they said, why we have to go on the ground? If it's the ground God really wants, we'll put the ground here. And they tie the ground to here and that don't need to make sujood. It's not about finding tricks with God but there's a reality. So why Allah ordered us to make sujood? Because there's a grounding for you. As soon as you put your head to the ground 
all your negativity will go into the earth and you feel the earth, you feel the energy being grounded, you feel now the confusion is in your head. When you talk to children they have a confusion in their head, not in their heart. They're so bombarded with TV, with TikTok, with videos, with thinking what their future going to be, what their work is going to be. And Allah gave the best prescription, make sujood. Tell your kids even they don't want to pray all the time, they're not fully all disciplined in their salah, he said, at least make sujood to take away the confusion now entering your head. All these waswas you have, all these concerns you have, go into prostration and ask your Lord that, Ya Rabbi I'm closest to you and many awliyaullah all their visions are in prostration. As soon as they make their sujood their reality appears to them in the mirror in that reflection. So it has an immense reality, they don't see it like this and the reality appearing. When Allah want to dress them with an energy and inspiration come into their heart make sujood now. And they go into sujood, in the sujood their reality appears to them like a looking into a mirror. Because you're closest to who your reality is in that association at that reality. So it has an immense reality. When you're making prostration your reality is the reflection right there on the other side. It's not the earth that you're on. So there's an immense reality that Allah made for us to, to make the prostration. So this is all energy. So look in our daily life with our cane is all energy. How to ground oneself of all the negativities. InshaAllah as give us more and more understanding and its importance inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How to cope with dissatisfaction with oneself? <clears throat> How to cope with dissatisfaction of oneself? InshaAllah try to be satisfied with the love of the Divinely Presence. Means that from all these teachings this is not to make somebody to become a depressed individual. This is to deflate the bad characteristics. We've given in other talks, you're the lottery winner. That you out of 500 million hajis, you came into the egg of your mom's womb. You were given the lottery, you were given the gift, you were given the supreme honour of an ability to come into existence. Out of 400, I don't know the nine, 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 nine hundred million people, all hajis, you came through. So if Allah didn't honour us already that you know this immense honour of being given the ability to come into existence. So means Allah loves His creation and you were created for a, an immense purpose, are you reaching it? So that's this teaching is to take us to God loves us created with an immense secret. Are you reaching it or you're just sort of distracted by being one on this earth and you look to the Divine and there's nothing there. But to teach that you've been given with a gift, you want to reach the gift? Learn how to deflate yourself and death is the great deflator. That's why Allah created death because He wants everybody to reach this reality. But to be deflated in the grave is significantly more difficult than just deflating ourselves on earth. I'm nothing Ya Rabbi compared to whatever your supreme power, of course I'm nothing. I'm nothing, I don't… I, I want to be nothing, I'm, I'm satisfied with being nothing, my bad character to put it down. And then Allah's immensity what we started tonight with, the immensity of Allah's power opens upon the servant. Instead of you worrying about money, I want to get money from this, I want to get knowledge from this book, I want to get this. Allah said, why you don't come to me? Be nothing in front of me, if my dress of oneness comes unto you all the money in the world will flow to you. If my dress of Divinely Light's dressed to you, knowledges will come to you that nobody can understand where they came from. Means why go to the lower source when you can go to the supreme source of everything? But that's people are not thinking like that. They think, oh no, going and becoming religious is you're, you're not going to get anything, you're not going to do anything. It's completely incorrect. So where all the sciences came from? Came from all the religious awliya. 
they brought you algorithm that now you're all enjoying your phones from these awliya who are all Sufi, all darvish who brought you medicine in Ibn Sina, came from all of these darvishes. They enlightened the whole earth and everybody benefiting from their realities and they got it from the Supreme One. They didn't have to get it from any lower source, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do we feel the energy of the blessings Allah bestows like rizq is not just wealth but much more than that? Similarly, homes carry an energy too. Some houses <coughs> give off a suffocation feeling on entry, why? The energy, you know, everything has a immense blessings. We said that like for the rizq same thing, that every dress is coming upon the soul. When Allah wants to dress the soul, the rizq of the soul is more important than the rizq of what's in your wallet. Allah when He dresses the soul of what tajallis will come, what emanations will appear, what realities that soul will now reach, that's the rizq of the soul. So that's why all the practices are based on achieving the rizq of the soul. We said even by writing you change completely the reality of your rizq because now you're a custodian of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. That your kitab is filled with writing Muhammadan haqqaiqs, Allah then change all the angels that are guarding you because now you're of an honoured uh, Muhammadan kingdom is upon all your books. It's not your book only filled with, he went here, he did that, he did this good, he did that bad. But everything becomes written, all these Muhammadan haqqaiqs, that soul is now of a very noble status, a scribe of the Muhammadan realities. So everything changes and then the energy of people who don't do any of these practices and have confusion, everybody is an energy being. So imagine entering into a, a place where they don't have a belief, they don't have a hope, there's a lot of anger, a lot of confusion. Yes, of course it's like walking into a black cloud that you feel like you're being emptied in two seconds. You don't even have to go to some people's homes, go to the mall. Anyone who wants to test energy, meditate a couple of times, do some good practices, walk to the mall and see how your eyes become red, your feet become burning and eventually you feel that all the difficulty of the people in these areas you're picking it up. That's why you have to go home, you have to shower. You have to shower and rinse and ask Allah to wash like the dead when they get washed and all their sins go away, Ya Rabbi wash me like a dead body under the shower that all the sins and difficulties of what I've been cast upon me to be washed away, inshaAllah. Assalamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam mm. What is the reality of having portraits of family in the home since the reality of keeping the shaykh's portraits are allowed and it brings blessings? Mm. The reality of photos, we have also a talk on that so you go to nurmuhammad.com and you can type in pictures and photos. The, the difference of a drawing is something completely different because you, you've made and fashioned something by your hand. The photo is a replication of what Allah has created. So that has its own reality and a soul attached to it and there's many different realities based on that. So pious people when you keep their photo, as soon as you look at them their soul is present. You don't even have to ask madad, as soon as you look at pious people your soul already asks for the madad, just your nafs doesn't. Your soul asks, who's this? And immediately that soul appears at faster than the speed of thought. And that's why people who have bad character they burn by that. So the minute they look at it the madad came and the shaitans on that person got burned and they say, take that photo down. That's the logic. If it didn't bother them, they wouldn't be saying that. If you had a photo of an elephant with five hands, they say, it's so beautiful, what is this? Because their devils are happy with it. But as soon as the picture of awliya, picture of pious people, the energy came and burned them, felt very uncomfortable, they say, take it down, take, take the photo down. But yet they watch TV, they have newspapers, they have every other photo that's completely forbidden. Because these people are, are, are not are exposing themselves but that shaitan has no problem with. 
encourages it. But that's the proof is always by the law of opposite. How those are okay and not being uh, confiscated and, and, and talked about but all of a sudden the pious person is agitating everybody in the house. That's when you know the power of what's going on. Same time people whom have bad backgrounds, when you bring their photo you bring all of the badness <laughs> into your environment. Yeah. So if they were big drinkers and <laughs> smokers, <laughs> you bring their photos you start to smell all their activities because all of whom they are is coming now. And you think they're going into the grave like roses or they're going with those characteristics into the grave. And as a result they walk that reality with that fragrance. They smell like their alcohol, they smell like their cigarettes, they smell like who they are and what they were doing. And that's why then people can start to smell cigarettes and alcohol in their home, they, they smell things that are not right because of those pictures that enter into the home. So there's many, many different realities. That's why don't post pictures of your children ever online anywhere because people with bad eyes, bad energy, bad, bad wants and desires their nazar can go and, and people are capable of doing things with their eyes and with their soul. So these are all protection. We have one post on, on online. Instead of Facebook it's called death book and that was I think the talk on the face. And the purpose of why shaitan is putting out the face and putting people's faces everywhere was to cross-contaminate people. So this is a process of cross-contaminating. When they want, when shaitanic systems want faces out, why? So that he can cross-contaminate it. Those whom are good he wants his bad ones to look at them, keep looking at them to make them sick until everything becomes cross-contaminated. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa In a panic situation how can we get immediate help or get satisfied by heart? Should we recite madad? Please forgive our ignorance. In a panic situation? Yeah inshaAllah you make madad anytime and you get used to making madad he said like a fireman that when you train with it, train with it, train with it then your heart is always quick to make your madad, visualize your shaykh, ask it to be present. And then you begin to make your salawats, your zikr and everything that's necessary. But if it's a situation in which you need 911 like emergency or you need to go to a doctor immediately seek medical attention. If you have a phone number when you call somewhere and they says, if this is an emergency please hang up the phone and go to the hospital right now. This is not, yeah. So people text like, this is an emergency, they email the help me, urgent, urgent, that's exactly the one that nobody will answer. Because you're using it for the wrong way. We are not an urgent service and this is not a you know ambulance service. So you have to text when everything is good, You not text, you email when everything is peaceful, good, you want to train. So this is you know that's very careful. If you need medical attention people go to get a doctor, you need police protection you go to the police. But if you want to learn spirituality there should be never a situation that's dramatically urgent like that. Yeah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sometimes we feel that we are drifting out from the path, then it feels as if something is missing in life and we jump back in this train. Is this heart connection? It's this is a hard connection, <laughs> <laughs> means that continuously coming in and out, in and out, it just has to probably be more consistent in the practices. That when you do everything that they're prescribing, when you do the practice, you write the teachings, you support, you're active, you're commenting, you're emailing, you feel yourself locked into it. You can't fool yourself that when, when I don't do anything and I'm not participating in anything, I'm not supporting anything, I'm not writing anything, well of course then I'm going to feel like I'm drifting away like some wind took me as a sail and I'm flying away like a kite. That's why the shaykh's teachings are like what they are. They're continuously locking people in and giving ten different ways to be active and to be locked on so that you feel satisfied at night. Not him, the shaykh doesn't need, he doesn't go to bed thinking he's going to be flying away. He's giving us an ability to be connected. Don't let your kite fly so far away because then you fear yourself, woo, 
like <laughs> this <laughs> string you cut, it's now gone, it's just out there in this universe. So he, he's reeling everybody in and giving them all different ways to participate, to be active, to make comments, to do everything. So at night you know that you feel connected, you're involved with the community, you're part of the whole understanding, the teaching. And at the same time that's why they teach their loyalty, be loyal, be active, be continuous, be, be consistent in the way and that should benefit you, it doesn't need benefit the shaykh, he's got what he's got. He's sharing from what Allah has given to his heart, he's not in need of that. But his service is to give back what Allah has given to his reality, what Prophet has given. But the student needs to feel the connection, that I'm connected, I have that love, I'm participating, Ya Rabbi I did the best I could today. And shall they make my tomorrow even stronger and better? And at the same time that love now is growing for Prophet more and more, more and more, more and more. But we know that we can't fool ourselves, oh, I don't think I did anything, of course then I'm going to go to bed not feeling very well, InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How do we differentiate between nothingness that the tariqah and our shaykhs would like from us and nothingness as a philosophy? Oh, follow the way and we, we can guarantee nothingness for you. <laughs> this is definitely not a philosophy class. You can ask the other people who are online, the ones whom are following, taking notes and active, immediately their lives are in testing and you'll, you'll get all sorts of testings from every type of direction. And you have to be from those whom are training to be sabireen. Everyone going to agitate you, everyone going to aggravate you, everyone's going to fight with you, there's not going to be a moment of peace, right? That's the way Allah wants it. So Mawlana used to describe that they're all like rocks for me. Every student Allah gives to me, I say, thank you, I open up my bag and <laughs> put the student in my bag. Then I take my bag, I begin to shake it. <laughs> So we're all the, the, the stones of these shaykhs and he said, only by this shaking Allah makes the stone to be purified, right? Because every stone has a potential of being beautiful. If you've seen the, the natural gla glass stones at the beach, they're actually like particles of glass but because the ocean keeps scratching them, scratching them, scratching them, they look like beautiful crystals. And by scratching each other, scratching our lives, our families, our, our, our communities, all of this scratching, scratching, all the rough edges are coming out. And that's what Allah won't because now you're becoming polished. As you become more polished your value is growing in Allah's presence. If you're just charcoal then you know well, this, I got a lot of charcoal, charcoal actually is good for fire, so <laughs> put, it there, put it over there. <laughs> But when you become through heat and pressure, what are they making artificially now on dunya? Diamonds. You can be a, a diamond maid, right? You can be born diamond, those are, <laughs> those are something else. Or Allah say, I can put you in a pressure cooker, I can turn up the heat and now you're oven made diamond. Now, oh we can't put a diamond in the fire, hey I mean, this is sad, this is a diamond. So then Allah changes your destiny. That becomes the issue. If we want to stay charcoal, we know where charcoal goes and it just goes off. But it, when we become semi-precious, now Allah says, no this one has a purpose now. Why, why we have to take him out with COVID? If we become very precious, absolutely why we have to take him out with this disease, with this pandemic, with this sickness. Why is everyone scared? It's because they're in the charcoal category. When you're charcoal category, <laughs> you're looking at these <laughs> <laughs> you look at the, these sicknesses that are coming, say, Ya Latif Ya Rabbi, are you, are you, is this my time? And the, the… so I say, you can't lie to yourself, doesn't matter shaykh lies to you, friend lies to you, somebody lies, no, we can't lie to ourselves. When I say to myself, Ya Rabbi, if I'm charcoal and it's my time to go, I go. If I have some purpose and you think I have a purpose, then why Allah want you to go? They say, this guy making really nice beautiful knot. At least keep him around. <laughs> Couple cycles of pandemic, keep Haji Shahid around. <laughs> right? This is what the Prophet is inspiring for all of us. Be something, do something. Don't just be charcoal. 
because you will live in your own fear in a world of difficulty that you're just charcoal and you know it, you're not, you can't fool yourself. Or you rise above, you purify it, you're trying to do your best, you're purifying yourself, now you're semi-precious to Allah You have a purpose, you have a potential. So then why? You won't have that sadness of, oh this, this came, this came, this came. Is it Allah inshaAllah has a purpose for me and if not then it's my time, whatever Allah wants. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.